Welcome to the talk this morning. Um, my name is Dr. Jennifer Dietrich. I'm a pediatric and adolescent gynecologist at Texas Children's, and we're gonna talk about ovarian cysts today. Just to give you a little bit of background, the most common question that we get is, what is an ovarian cyst? Well, an ovarian cyst is the most basic sense, in the most basic sense, a sac that develops on the ovary, and it might be filled with fluid, solid material, or both. And there are two types of cysts. One may be functional and related to the body's hormones. One is non-functional and not related to the body's hormones at all. Let's also go over some basic terminology because a cyst on the ovary can mean a lot of different things and it's very confusing due to the, a variety of underlying causes. So an ovarian cyst is typically a catch-all term, but it might mean that it's just simply a normal follicle. Um, it could be that it's a persistent cyst and you suspect that it's a non-functional variety. It could mean that a woman has polycystic ovaries. It might mean that there was a ruptured cyst such as a corpus luteum and that's the cyst that gets left behind and produces hormones prior to the onset of a period for a young woman. And then sometimes, truly, people have a ruptured cyst that re results in abdominal pain, and typically they don't see these actively on an ultrasound, but suspect it because there might be fluid in the pelvis. So how common are these? It is very common to find an ovarian cyst in women of reproductive age, including from the time that puberty changes begin to occur um, a few years before the first cycle. It is less common to actually see ovarian cysts in neonates and children, but it can happen. Unfortunately, most cysts are benign rather than malignant um, or cancerous in children and adolescents. So how are these cysts discovered typically? Well, during an imaging study ordered for usually another reason, a radiologist might notice a cyst in the pelvic region. Alternatively, an episode of abdominal pain um, experienced by a young woman may cause doctors to order an ultrasound to look at the ovary specifically, which may find a cyst similar to the one pictured on this ultrasound. So what can an ovarian cyst do? Well, they can resolve, they can persist, or they can even cause a twist. And so when an ovarian cyst becomes large enough and heavy enough, it actually um, it cannot be well supported by the ligaments that help support the ovary um, in its correct anatomic position. And as a result, the heaviness of the cyst, whether it's cyst filled with fluid or a cyst filled with fluid and solid components or solid components alone, it's sometimes heavy enough to result in a twist which can affect the blood supply to the ovary and the fallopian tube. And so, if an ovarian cyst is found in the absence of any symptoms, then what do you do about it? Okay, well sometimes they're self-limiting, and the self-limiting types are as follows. So they're functional, and they're typically found on a pelvic ultrasound incidentally, usually one to three centimeters, or a half an inch to an inch and a half, and they have simple characteristics, meaning that it's all fluid contained within the cyst wall. These have a tendency to resolve spontaneously. There's not any specific follow-up needed. And usually it relates to the timing of a woman's menstrual cycle. Now, alternatively, if the cyst looks more complex, there may be a recommendation to do a follow-up ultrasound study in about four to six weeks to determine if the cyst resolves. Now, for the persistent cyst, if the cyst is simple or complex but it never resolves, it could be this non-functional type that requires surgical removal. And so a follow-up ultrasound is usually necessary to determine if the cyst is actually persistent or if it's grown, and your doctor will discuss the best plan of action to remove this per type of persistent cyst. So I wanted to go through a little bit um, about age groups because we kind of anticipate different things based on the age of our patients. And so in the fetal or neonatal period, cysts are really related to maternal hormone effects more commonly. And these hormone effects decrease in the first six to nine months of life and they are likely to resolve. So no specific surgical intervention is typically needed. In the prepubertal population, cysts are not common. 
Um, but they can be related to early signs of puberty, thyroid problems that actually secondarily stimulate the ovaries, or even hormone producing tumors. And so these are cysts that definitely need to be investigated. Um, but if they're found to have a hormonal cause, may not result in surgical management. In the adolescent age group, functional cysts are quite common, um, and they're typically related to puberty and menstrual cycles. Other hormone imbalances can also occur during this time frame, and tumors can occur. So we want to kind of sort out the functional cyst from the non-functional cyst. And then finally, in the adult women, cysts are also quite common um, prior to the onset of menopause, but ovarian tumors also can occur in this population. And certainly when we see a cyst or any type of abnormality of the ovary in the postmenopausal women, woman, we are more concerned about ovarian cancer. And so here is a little depiction um, looking at the ovaries and their morphology over time. And so we're just kind of looking from the time frame of the neonate all the way to early adolescence. But if you kind of look at this graph, what you see is that in the beginning, the appearance of the ovary is very homogeneous, meaning that kind of the architecture of the ovary, if you look at it on ultrasound, looks very similar throughout the ovary. As you age, however, there are new microcystic components that begin to occur, even in those prepubertal years prior to the onset of puberty. And then once puberty actually happens, there are macrocystic changes in the ovary, meaning that sometimes the ovary is going to have the characteristics of active follicles, and sometimes it's going to have that more homogeneous morphology. But there's a mixture of some of these microcystic, macrocystic, and homogeneous architecture components. So, in general, if we are thinking about managing an ovarian cyst, what are we going to do? How are we going to counsel our patients? Well, number one, if we move into the category of observation or medication, number one, adolescents with functional cysts are candidates for hormones. And so one example of this is a hormonal contraceptive. These can actually suppress cysts over time, particularly for those that are functional and causing abdominal pain. Prepubertal girls would not be a category for whom we would use these types of hormones and they might be found instead to have a precocious puberty cause or a thyroid cause. And so we need to choose the right medication to suppress puberty and suppress cyst development. Underlying medical conditions such as thyroid conditions can also be treated. And so if someone is found to have a hypothyroid condition, for instance, adding the thyroid hormone back to their body will actually help suppress cyst formation. So let's move over to the surgery category because this is where we really get into the persistent cyst, a concern for a tumor or a concern for a twist or torsion. And so certainly when someone presents with acute abdominal pain, we worry that there is an acute twist affecting the blood supply to the ovary and the tube. And in that situation, it becomes a surgical emergency to go in and relieve the twist to restore, number one, the anatomy um, and restore the blood supply so that the ovary and the tube can be salvaged. And if we find a cyst at the time, we're gonna remove it at the time um, because likely the heaviness of a cyst caused it to twist in the first place. Alternatively, if we find something like a tumor, as I mentioned before in this age group, frequently they're benign. And so a lot of times these can be managed laparoscopically, just like we would in the acute setting for a twist that affects the ovary. And so um, fortunately with minimally invasive surgery, we have the access to be able to manage many of these cysts um, in a minimally invasive fashion. I wanted to go through a couple of cases just because I think that they illustrate some of the things that we see and might actually just help remind folks um, that if these things occur, it's, it's sort, it gives you a roadmap for the future in terms of what you should do and how to contact your provider. So in the case of a 12-year-old girl, she presents the office with complaints of blood in her urine. During the course of an abdominal ultrasound, they actually notice a two centimeter left-sided ovarian cyst. You find out that her last menstrual cycle was two weeks ago. It's determined to be a functional cyst that will actually resolve. And so in this situation, we can provide reassurance to the patient and her family. Alternatively, 
In case two, we have a 10-year-old girl. She's premenarchal, presents with acute onset abdominal pain and also vomiting. She comes to the ER with her parents and a pelvic ultrasound reveals an enlarged right ovary with a five centimeter simple cyst and a normal appendix. Her pain does not respond to pain medications in the ER. And in this situation, we have a very high suspicion for an ovarian torsion. And the pediatric gynecologist involved discusses surgery with the family. And so I hope you've learned a little bit about ovarian cysts today, occurring um, all the way from the neonatal time period through the adult years. And if you have questions about ovarian cysts, please don't hesitate to contact our pediatric and adolescent gynecology group. Thanks.